So, the NBA draft. It's just over a month away. Right now, it's actually just hit midnight where I am on the 15th of um, October. Depending on where you are in the world, it is either the 14th or the 15th of October right now. So, what does that mean? Basically, um, it means that we are a month and three days. We are 34 days away from the NBA draft. And this one is a bit of a weird one. This one's a bit of a weird one. Like, we haven't seen many, any of these prospects pet play. For James Wiseman, it'll be over a year. Like, it'll be over a year between when he played his last game and the NBA draft. Haven't seen any of these guys play since March at the latest, which has been six months. So, it's just kind of a crazy, crazy time. So, this year's draft in general, it doesn't seem like it is the um, going to be the greatest draft in the world. Like, I'm not sure any of these top four picks or Will these? These might be the top four, to be completely honest. I doubt any of these guys um, would have gone in 2018 in the top six. I think you still take Mo Bamba um, at that time over a Wiseman right now. And I still think, um, honestly, um, Mo Bamba, Trey Young, Jaron Jackson Jr., Bagley, Aiton, Doncic. Yeah, I think... I think with the just even the gap between a Doncic and a Denny is mass was it's night and day. Can't even compare Doncic and Denny, and he went three. So it is there is a big big gap between this draft and say 2018. Last year's draft, maybe you could argue someone like a Lamelo or a Wiseman could have gone number four, but it is a it is pretty weak draft. But one player who had a lot of intrigue in high school was this guy right here, James Wiseman. And the reason why I'm making this video is what I said in my original draft video, original kind of mock draft breakdown video, is that I felt from the start the teams were overthinking things. Now James Wiseman should have still should still be in the conversation for number one overall pick. And thank God he's getting back into that conversation. It gives like means I have a little bit of faith in these draft experts. And I'm telling you. These draft experts that had um, him going to like number nine in the draft. I don't know what crazy people. Uh, like anyone can make a mock draft and be call themselves a draft expert. But like um, there was no chance he was ever falling out of the top four in this draft. And thankfully people are starting to, um, to realize that. Uh, the NBA execs, again, think he's one of the best players in the draft. Think he's going to be a very, very high pick. So again, it is, it's going to be interesting to see where it is. Um, how he ends up and um, be picked. I'm guessing two to three. I don't think he gets taken number one because of Minnesota, but I'm guessing two or three. So if you guys don't know, James Wiseman was the number one player in high school. He was projected to be number one overall pick in this year's draft. So basically what the way he was projected to be was kind of like a better uh, Rudy Gobert. If you get me, like that type of player, a better Mo Bamba. While, yeah, he might, like, his jump shot is not spectacular, but he's got a good, he had a decent enough mid range shot, a great rebounder, 7 6 wingspan, and it's super athletic. Like, I remember watching him in high school, just the way he moved a 7 1 with that long wingspan, he was so athletic. Like, he was gonna, he was a guy that looked like he was gonna come into the NBA and average 18 and 9 from the get go. Um, unfortunately, though, Around the time of the draft last year, so 14th of November, after three games, he was declared ineligible um, for college basketball. However, in those games, it's not like he didn't average 20 and 10. Like, people talking about this guy like he torn his ACL or something. The dude, yeah, he was ineligible, but the dude still averaged 20 and 10 in college. We can't forget that. 20 and 10, not many people can do that, especially as a freshman. Um... And funnily enough, like as time went on, the mock drafts were coming in, um, things were changing while he wasn't playing. We always have to take that into account. Like he was not playing. It wasn't like he was injured though. And then even like December, most polarizing prospect. Um, like it was a weird one. It's like, it starts off, it's just like starts off talking about him and then just goes, um, his archetype isn't, value as it used, isn't as valuable as it used to be. All I'm gonna say is, what what are you talking about his archetype like this isn't 2k the question is is do they think i personally think he can develop as a jump shooter 
I personally think he can. If he, if he can't develop as a jump shooter, that's a different story. But it's not like he has shown no ability to shoot the ball. It's not like he's shown no ability. Um, but, like, I still think that, again, this is almost the start of the overthinking. Like, if in this draft, this is a weak draft, if he turns out to be Rudy Gobert, this will be a home run. If you can get a Rudy Gobert, if he's a two-time All-Star in this draft, if you can get a two-time All-Star in a draft like this, it's a home run. Will there be guys that are better than two-time All-Stars in this draft? One million percent. But in a complete just like crapshoot like this um, draft is right now, just like 2013, who no, no, no sane person takes Giannis number one in 2013. Heck, they thought the Milwaukee Bucks were crazy for drafting him when they did in 2013. This is a draft similar to that where if you can get any production out of... If you can make a top pick into a solid starter and a one suit on all-star, you've hit a home run. And that's the thing with Wiseman is, do I project... And um, people are almost overthinking this. Because again, will he be is like game changed by the NBA? No, but I don't think anyone in this draft is going to be. Um, And heck, on the 21st of May, Wiseman is the front runner. 20 of 35 NBA executives... None of these guys have played basketball. Just, we have to take this into account. None of these guys have played basketball since the, um, uh, since this poll was taking place. And 20 of 35 um, had him at number one. And I don't know which one said Obi Toppin. <laughs> I have no idea which one that was. And the crazy thing is that right now, NBA draft rumors, Wiseman's still in play. If you guys are looking, um, here, I need to find this here. Bleacher Report ranked Wiseman as the number nine overall player. He was number eight in the mock draft that I reacted to. Like, how? Like, how does he drop that far? He doesn't, like, he does not fit with, um, I'm going to say this right now. He does not fit with Minnesota. He is not going to board. Unless he, unless there's a team that's really interested in him um, at number one. And is, is afraid Minnesota are going to take him. Or in Minnesota trade back one to two picks. Say, for example, if um, Charlotte really want him, and they might almost um, try to get another asset out of them for Wiseman, but do like a Boston Celtics Philadelphia trade. But like, is here again. How how does Wiseman go to number nine? He's the most talented player in this draft, and there's no well. He is the second highest upside after Lamelo, while being significantly safer. He has a significantly higher floor, while well, almost as high an upside as Lamelo. Lamelo's a high upside, but man, Lamelo, legitimate. Lamelo could be like he has such. He's a boomer bust. Lamelo's boomer bust. But like a worst case scenario, um, James Wiseman is a better Nerlens Noel. And again, in this year's draft, if you're getting a better Nerlens Noel with a top ten pick, it's probably an okay thing, considering how bad this draft um seems to be. And then, as a shock to nobody. Real enthusiasm for James Wiseman after workouts. I mean, there should have been enthusiasm for him before the workouts. Like, the dude was the number one overall pick. Like, he was the number one high school player. He played like the number one overall pick in his few games in college. He was just declared ineligible. People out here, like, these draft experts are out here acting like the dude tore his ACL. Like, I saw less negative stuff being said about Nerlens Noel back in 2013 than is being said to try to get James Wiseman down to 10. No mock drafts had Nerlens Noel going to number six to the Pelicans. And he did. Um, after him tearing his ACL in the last draft this week we've had. The dude was just like, <laughs> Wiseman was just ineligible and he's getting the Nerlens Noel treatment. <laughs> Who tore his ACL like? Oh, I just don't really get it. But in a shock to absolutely nobody, there's real enthusiasm for him. And as well as that, he's not there is he's not out of play for the number one overall pick so in what could be what appears to be a historically weak draft um it's it's going to be one of those situations again michael carter williams won rookie of the year in 2013 i don't see any of these guys coming into the nba um and averaging and doing anything spectacular i think in a certain situation a wiseman could average maybe an 18 and 9 i think anthony edwards in the right situation given the ball could be okay but at the same time, people are talking about Anthony Edwards like he's a Dwayne Wade Oladipo. Um, I think he's more he's more Ben McElmore than he is Victor Oladipo. Um, Denny Avdia is probably has a ceiling of um, Boyan Bogdanovich. Like, um, 
his ceiling is like a 20 point per game solid defensive player third option on a good team and the mellow balls boom or bust so am i surprised that the safer the safest option james wiseman who is a freak athlete and has not been injured one second is back in the conversation with number one i am not whatsoever am i surprised at all that he's killing it in workouts i'm not but at the end of the day do i think he's gonna go number one probably not but again it's a conversation it's a conversation this year i have a weird feeling this could be an overthink situation the last time we've seen a team heavily trying to shop the number one overall pick um like the wolves are right now and even um the warriors trying to shop the number two overall pick the last time we saw teams trying to shop um picks like they are as much as they are this year was in 2013 when the cleveland cavaliers were trying to give up literally to literally any team any competent player for that number one overall pick and they overthought the situation and drafted anthony bennett because they thought you know what anthony bennett's probably um the guy that can come in and make the biggest impact so i have a weird i'm going to say this right now i have i think there is more of a chance of obi toppin going number one and james wiseman because it could be another anthony bennett situation where timberwolves are like you know what we can't trade our pick but we're going to just draft a guy um we can't get anything for this we're going to draft a guy that we think fits in our team so i actually think they're more, it's more likely to obi topping gets drafted number one than james wiseman but at the end of the day i still think that he could be the best player in this draft and if he falls out of the top four it's going to be a steal i think it'll be a steal for whoever he drops to if somehow he drops to cleveland at five you pair up him with well like andre drummond he's, he's like, it's a weird one like if he doesn't get taken by charlotte at three Chicago probably don't take him at four because they've got Wendell Carter. At five, um, Wiseman probably don't take him. Um, Cleveland probably don't take him because they've Drummond. Heck, he might he might start falling. This again, Nerlens Noel situation all over again. But anyway, yeah, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.